Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you everything you need to know about taking birth control pills for acne. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. Birth control pills are frequently prescribed for acne in women, especially women whose acne flares with their period. Oral contraceptive pills, as they're called, or birth control pills, combine two types of hormones, estrogens and progesterone. How do they work? Well, they influence the normal cycles of hormone fluctuations in our body that govern the menstrual cycle, suppressing ovulation. So that's how they work to prevent pregnancy as contraceptives. They block the ovulation step. So how the heck do they work to treat acne? Well, when women's hormone profiles fluctuate, they change from a more female predominant pattern of estrogens and progesterones to a more male predominant pattern um, of androgens or testosterone. And androgens influence the skin quite a bit and cause the um, oil glands to make more oil and they cause the skin to become a little bit thicker and the skin cells to become stickier. So you're more prone to clogging of the pores, excessive oiliness, and that's really what underlies flares of acne around the, period, the menstrual cycle, hormonal acne. For whatever reason, hormonal acne seems to often affect the jawline, the chin, the neck, but it really can happen anywhere. Any type of acne, however, really can be influenced by these changes in hormones. The pills need to be the type that are combined oral contraceptive pills. There are a variety of other contraceptives on the market that just use one type of hormone, progesterone, like the progesterone only pill. Um, and also there are some implant, Im implantable contraceptives that release progesterone. These actually can worsen acne. So a lot of people say, why did my acne get so horrible when I went on birth control? Well, it may have been that you were not on a combined oral contraceptive pill that combined estrogen and progesterone. You may have been on a method that was progesterone only. And in that case, yes, the acne can get worse. So in order for the acne to see benefit from taking a birth control pill, it needs to be one that combines both estrogen and progesterone. There are actually three brands of oral contraceptive pills on the market that are FDA approved for the treatment of acne in women. These include Orthotricycline, Estrostep, and Yaz. So these are the three brands that get the FDA seal of approval for the treatment of acne in women. However, um, any combined oral contraceptive pill will also benefit acne by the same mechanism. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of these three. So your physician may prescribe another brand, what's called off-label, meaning it's not FDA approved, but they know it's gonna help anyway. Who is a good candidate for combined oral contraceptive pills to treat acne? Well, women whose acne flares with the menstrual cycle. But truthfully, any female who has acne can benefit from having a conversation about whether or not oral birth control pills are right for them. Because while your acne may not necessarily flare with your periods, there is always an underlying hormonal component governing oiliness, skin cell stickiness that may benefit from a combined oral contraceptive pill. There's also an endocrine disorder called polycystic ovary syndrome. I know a lot of you guys deal with that. And in that disease, those women suffer from um, acne and also hirsutism. These are skin signs that can benefit from the use of oral contraceptive pills. For sure, you absolutely want to discuss this with your treating healthcare provider, your family medicine doctor or internist, gynecologist, or your dermatologist. Have a conversation if birth control pills are going to be right for you for the treatment of your acne. Who should not be prescribed birth control pills for their acne? If you have a history of blood clots, it's contraindicated because the estrogen in birth control pills does increase the risk of clotting. And for people with a history of clotting or some sort of underlying blood clotting disorder, then it is contraindicated. If you don't have a history of blood clots, the risk is very, 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 very low. And we encourage people to, um, you know, if you're gonna be on a long trip, and sedentary that it's good to get up and move around just as a general precaution. That's just a good measure to reduce the risk of clotting. A sign of a blood clot would be sudden one-sided swelling of either your arm or your leg 
redness, warmth, dis discomfort, that would be, those are clues that you might have a blood clot. And in that situation, immediately call your healthcare provider and, you know, tell them about it. And, and if you can't get a hold of them, you know, you might actually even want to consider going to the urgent care or emergency room because a blood clot is nothing to, to, to mess around with. But in people who are otherwise healthy and don't have any history of clot, blood clots, you know, it's very, very, very low, low risk issue. The other group of people who uh, birth control pills are contraindicated for because of the risk of blood clotting is people who smoke. So if you smoke, it's not, you know, good to be on birth control. It is too risky with the blood clot thing. If you smoke, as a side note, please, 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 please do everything in your power to try and stop smoking. Also, if you have a history of migraines, birth control is not going to be a good option for you as well. So those are the, you know, kind of absolute contraindications. Definitely talk about it with your, with your doctor. How long does it take to see results when you start taking birth control for your acne? As with anything in the skin, nothing happens overnight. Some people say they see an improvement in one month. So, you know, some patients report that, or at any rate, they notice that their skin is less greasy. Um, however, for the most part, it takes at least three months, six months typically for you to really start seeing results. So you have to be on it for a good while before you really start to appreciate the skin benefit of the reduced oiliness, reduced pore clogging, and overall improvement in the acne. What are the side effects of birth control pill? Most commonly, you can expect to experience some nausea, bloating, and breast tenderness. This is a, these are very common side effects. The good news is they typically, for the most part, go away after three months. So the first three months can be the most uncomfortable, um, but then those side effects typically subside. If you're having nausea with taking birth control pills, a tip is to take the pills in the early evening and then make sure you have breakfast the following morning. That can help quite a bit with the nausea. Some people have issues with headaches and one thing that can actually help is some birth control pill packs, they have a hormone free week. And that week, you know, you're not, you're taking either placebo pills or you're not taking, you know, you're just not taking anything for a week. And that's typically when people have what's called a withdrawal bleed that, you know, as a period. Um, but a way, if you're having headaches, sometimes we tell patients to skip that, that placebo week and just move on to the next pack of pills. Um, so that re can reduce the headache symptoms. Um, birth control pills that has, have drosperone in them, like Yaz, those birth control pills, the drosperone has a bit of a diuretic effect, and that can actually end up helping mitigate symptoms of bloating and breast tenderness. Other side effects that are pretty common are changes in mood. Some people claim they don't feel quite like themselves, they're more moody. Some people feel as though their mood is improved. Some people report a change in their libido. There's actually a, a study that looked at this and about 64% of people on birth control pills say there's no change in their libido. 22% had an increase in libido and 15% had a decrease in their libido. And you know, that can be something that people just, you know, are not okay with obviously. And that might be a reason why you end up not wanting to stay on birth control. But that is another symptom that sometimes resolves on its own. Another potential side effect that you guys might be worried about because this is a skincare channel is melasma. Melasma is classically referred to as the mask of pregnancy. Dark brown patches on cheeks, foreheads, really anywhere on the, on the skin. Um, and we call it the mask of pregnancy because it shows up during pregnancy, but any um, hormones that you take that have estrogen in them can trigger melasma. Uh, it's not always going to happen. It's not a guarantee you take, that you take birth control pills, you're going to get melasma. But if you have melasma, it certainly can worsen that. And if you've never had melasma, you might start seeing some hyperpigmentation. There was a study done in the 60s, 70s that showed that it happened with about 29%. But if you actually look at that study, back then they were using uh, combined pills with a much higher dosage of estrogen. So it's not, you know, that's not as commonly used anymore. 
so it's less less risky but it certainly is a potential side effect the melasma does go away albeit slowly when you stop the birth control pill and a way to reduce that the risk of the melasma of course is to protect your skin using a broad spectrum sunscreen spf 30 or higher every single day including when you're indoors because the uv that comes through window glass remember can drive uh, melasma and there are studies showing that sunscreens with iron oxides can uh, be preventative and helpful uh, for people with melasma because they block out uh, visible light that likewise can contribute to, to melasma. Uh, so use a tinted mineral sunscreen, for example, that can be a great option for at least reducing that risk. All right, but probably one of the most pressing questions that I get is do I have to be on birth control forever to maintain good control of my acne? You don't, you do not, but do realize that birth control pills they're not a cure for acne. They merely address the hormonal component of acne and that's what yields the improvement. When you stop the birth control pills, you absolutely can see a return of your baseline acne. However, we don't usually just prescribe birth control pills. I mean, we don't. That's not like a first line treatment for acne for anybody is to just give them a pack of birth control pills and be like, hey, see you later. There needs to be other treatments started Ideally, at the same time, topicals that take time to work, but by the time you get to a point where things have improved, you know, you may be able to transition to just topicals and not worry about the acne returning when you stop the birth control pills. For example, the topical that pretty much every acne patient should be on, in my opinion, or benefits from most acne patients do, it's going to be a topical retinoid. Uh, you know, that might be prescription uh, tretinoin or over-the-counter adapalene. Not only do retinoids help in reducing oiliness, but they also help improve the skin cell turnover within the pore, kind of helping uh, with that stickiness issue, reducing pore clogging and they can help reduce um, flares of acne down the road. So, you know, it wouldn't just be like you're just being prescribed birth control pills. There would be something, something else. And then of course the lifestyle factors really play a major role in acne. We have learned so much more about acne as a disease and the lifestyle factors are increasingly more obvious <laughs> that they play a role in disease severity. Managing your stress is really important. When you are stressed out, that raises cortisol levels, which influence oiliness and skin cell stickiness as well. So coping with stress and finding out ways to cope with stress and mitigating your stress is actually really important in your journey to improving your hormonal acne or any type of acne. Getting good sleep is imperative. Seven to nine hours is really what adults need to have their um, skin properly heal and for good immune health. I mean, it's just very, very important. Also, when you're sleep deprived, the stress hormones, they get kicked up, that further aggravates acne. And then your diet. We have learned uh, over the past few years that diet really does, as it turns out, play a major role in the severity of acne, or at least it seems to. Specifically diets that are high glycemic diets, uh, you know, diets that are center around processed sugary foods, um, and you know, uh, don't have enough fruits and vegetables. And for some people it's dairy. You know, there is definitely a connection between dairy and acne, specifically milk consumption and acne. Uh, so really, you know, reducing the burden of inflammatory foods in your diet, favoring fruits, vegetables, whole food things that aren't as processed and are, you know, have a lower glycemic burden, if you will, can definitely help. I have a video all about um, acne and diet, and I have a video about sugars and skin. I want you guys to check that out to inform yourself about the types of foods that really can actually benefit your skin and kind of help in your acne journey. You know, eating this way isn't going to cure the acne, but it can help in reducing total body inflammation, helping you with blood sugar control, and helping with the acne long term. Exercise is also super important because exercise helps uh, in reducing total body inflammation that contributes to acne and it also helps us handle um, sugars better in terms of our, our blood sugar and response to that and insulin uh, hormones that affect the oil gland as well. And um, exercise also releases stress 
and stress again will worsen acne so it's kind of a nice you, you know there are multiple benefits of exercise so getting in some exercise daily is also really important practicing gentle skincare not using harsh scrubs overly drying cleansers it's simply not realistic to expect that you are going to be on birth control pills for the rest of your life uh, regardless of what your plans are for for pregnancy down the road, you may want to want to conceive at some point. So obviously you're going to have to stop, uh, you know, or you may, who knows, decide that you don't want to take birth control pills anymore. People, you know, they have mixed feelings about taking them. People don't like taking pills every day. There is a good chance that you will not be on it forever. Do you have to worry about your acne flaring when, when you stop? Yes, that is a potential problem that you will encounter when you stop. But having other treatments on board, topicals, and addressing the lifestyle factors, they really reduce the risk that this is going to happen for you when you stop. Last but not least, definitely see a board certified dermatologist, you guys. I know I emphasize that all the time, but now more than ever, you know, if you have been a bit, you know, feeling a little bit disenfranchised with dermatology for your acne, definitely give it a second thought because we now, for the first time, have more acne medications at our disposal than we have ever had before, newer treatments, specifically uh, treatments that can help with hormonal acne. For a while now, we've had topical Dapsone, aka Axone, which is proving itself to be beneficial for women with hormonal acne. We also, of course, have uh, another hormonal medication we've had for years and used to treat acne, spironolactone, uh, that likewise can help by addressing the hormonal fluctuations that contribute to acne. But now we've got also at our armamentarium a new topical I'm really excited about. Um, it just became available this year. It is a topical medication called Clascaterone, uh, aka Win Levy, that um, actually is a uh, topical anti-androgen. So instead of having to take a birth control pill or a hormonal pill, this addresses that hormonal issue just within the skin. So you don't have to expose yourself to the systemic side effects. It's still a very, very new medication. So I don't wanna give you false hope that it's like the end all be all. Um, but that's showing promise. So that's another reason to revisit the dermatologist to see if you might be a candidate for this. There's also minocycline foam. Minocycline, as you guys know from my videos, is an oral antibiotic. Uh, we don't like to prescribe oral antibiotics for a prolonged period of time. There are risks, but this is nice in that you, know, you don't expose yourself to those risks systemically. It's very well tolerated. It has those nice anti-inflammatory properties and might be a good option for you. Um, and we've got new uh, uh, retinoids at our disposal these days too. Um, we have Altrano Lotion and we have Acleaf. I've got videos on these. Uh, much less irritating or seeming to be much less irritating than older older retinoids that we typically prescribe uh, for, for acne. So definitely see a board certified dermatologist, even if you've seen one in the past and didn't find that the treatments were helpful. We do have newer treatments on the horizon these days that you know might make a difference, especially in the case of hormonal acne. For a lot of people, contraceptive pills are simply not an option because uh, they don't, uh, you know, it's against their uh, culture or religion for having birth control pills, there's still other options that definitely can help the hormonal acne beyond birth control pills. Um, so, you know, don't feel like if you have hormonal acne, this is your only option, but it can definitely help. It's not a cure and it's not first line treatment. We wouldn't just prescribe anybody. Uh, we wouldn't just prescribe birth control pills. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.